Okay, welcome back to the weekly Worm Farm check-in. My name is Steve Churchill and I'm the owner of the Urban Worm Company. Okay, so the last time we checked in on the bin, things looked pretty good. We saw a lot of juveniles growing out, which is encouraging. You know, we started this bin with a pretty small number of worms. And one of the things I wanted to do with this series was show you how you can nurse a neglected worm population back to health. And I think we're doing that. Now, when you're trying to increase a worm population, it seems like nothing is happening for the longest time. And then there's this acceleration to the point where you're wondering where all these worms came from. That's going to come from an increase in the number of worms to cocoon production, of course. But there's a second factor where the juveniles themselves grow into adulthood pretty quickly. So between the creation of baby worms and the maturation of those babies into adults, it can seem like the amount of worm biomass, or what I just like to call worm meat, just seems to explode. And I think we're close to seeing that with this bin, which is awesome. So this week, if things are looking good, we're going to give it an interesting feeding. I took the food waste outside my patio door, which has banana peels, peppers, cucumbers, Brussels sprouts, and we're going to puree it into a slurry using a food processor. Now, I haven't told Mrs. Churchill I'm doing this, so if you're interested in using a nice household appliance on a nasty food waste, either ask permission from your significant other or just wake up early enough to puree your food waste, feed your worms, clean up and hide the evidence before your significant other wakes up. With that out of the way, here's what it looked like when I put the food waste through the food processor. Now, I want you to notice a couple things. First, the volume goes way down as we break this stuff into smaller particles. And secondly, and I think more importantly, pureeing food waste releases a ton of water. So your blended up food waste is gonna be very wet. And remember, when we squeeze our vermicompost, we want one, maybe two drops of water to squeeze out between our knuckles. And watch how much water comes out of this food waste when I blend it. So what are we gonna have to do? We're gonna have to add bedding with this feeding to absorb that water. Okay, before we open up this bin, if you like these videos and want me to make more of them, especially these weekly worm farm check-ins, please like this video, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. All right, let's open up the worm farm, check on the population, and hopefully give it a feeding. All right, gang, here we go. Uh, as always, we're going to check on the temperature, the humidity, just see how things are going. So in the Philadelphia area right now, it's uh, about 56 degrees, I believe. Um, in the barn here, it's about the same. So 55 degrees, got 55% humidity. And it's, uh, as far as the temperature goes, we're still looking at uh, 60, about 62 degrees in the vermicompost. A little normal to have the temperatures in the vermicompost be a little bit higher than the outdoor temperatures if the outdoor temperatures are really cool. So. Anyway, things are uh, things are looking good in here. Um, I did uh, cheat and I checked the uh, bin this uh, earlier this week. As you can see, like broccoli stalks like this, these things take forever to break down. Um, and we still got plenty of them around here. And so when they're not breaking down, it just, you know, we're not going to see a whole lot of activity around here. Um, did find some good pockets of uh, good pockets of worms working through material. Again, like right here is a good, well, I just jostled them around, but it was a nice Nice little area with with a decent amount of worm activity, uh, both babies, adult, adults, and juveniles working. So happy with that. Uh, things uh, things look pretty good. I, the population got a nice little nice little pocket here. Um, looks like we have a I see a couple millipedes in here too. But uh, worm population looks looks good. Looks like it's uh, improving really nicely. Um, the one thing I will tell you is that you know we we put. Uh, this, this is a citrus peel here. Um, and when I looked in the bin earlier, and you can actually still see some evidence of it right here, uh, this mold, uh, there was quite a bit of mold growing on these uh, peels earlier this week, and that's normal. So people freak out about it. Mold in a worm bin is not that big a deal. It's gonna happen a lot on citrus. Uh, the one thing I will say is that there's not, you know, when I looked in here earlier and I kind of, you know, poke around at the various different food wastes and go, okay, what do the worms seem to be liking and what do they don't like? The worms were not touching the the food or the uh, citrus peels yet. They weren't touching the orange peels. That is kind of an interesting observation, kind of normal. I, I wouldn't not put orange peels in your worm bin. <laughs> I think you're fine to do that. I wouldn't worry that much about the acidity. Uh, it's just don't expect them to the worms to swarm it just yet. But I think once once the peels themselves start breaking down a little bit more, mellowing out, it's going to be just fine. So the one thing I didn't do is do a and it's tough to do now because i don't want to harm the worm population but take our stuff and squeeze it and see if we can get there we go got some it's going to be tough to see from this angle because it's 
camera's looking down, but we do have some water that squeezed out between my knuckles here that you can kind of see see some of that wetness. So pretty happy with the pretty happy with the moisture levels. So yeah, uh, the worm population does seem to be accelerating, not quite to that point of like where did all the worms come from, but when I pull up handfuls of vermicompost, I'm getting really nice, uh, you know, what looks to be an improving worm population. This will get more dense as, as time moves on. So uh, I like how things are going. So I'm going to take that pureed food waste, which is right here. And again, let's just look at let's just look at this stuff. This stuff is wet. It's going to break down super quickly. But I also think it's going to be very attractive to the worm. So we're just going to go ahead and um, dump this in here, but dump it in with um, some pit moss to help uh, absorb that moisture. Um, so I tell you what I'll do is I think I'm just going to uh, take some pit moss here first. Stuff kind of needs to be broken up a little bit, but take this, put a nice layer. You know, I'm breaking breaking one of my rules here with which is like don't don't feed again until you see the previous like food waste broken down. When it's something like broccoli socks, this stuff is just fiber and water for the most part. Uh, it's okay if this stuff hasn't broken down before you feed again, but if you've got like banana peels or a whole bunch of pumpkin or something like that that just hasn't appeared to have broken down at all yet then i would not be feeding again um so this is uh really looking forward to seeing what this looks like next week because i think uh you know it's already unrecognizable as food waste in terms of the uh you know in terms of the food waste in, in a sense because you, you know it's tough to see the individual components so just by pureeing we did that but i think the worms are really gonna um really gonna take to this stuff really well. So with a little bit more of that pit moss in here, and then let's just go ahead and dump all this stuff out. This is kind of kind of gross. Again, Mrs. Churchill's gonna be really happy when she uh, sees her food waste processor come in with all sorts of gunk on it. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things people said on a previous video is, hey, why don't you just bury your food waste and then you don't have to worry about fruit flies. That's true. Um, but again, you're talking to a lazy vermicomposter here. Yeah, I think I think the worms are really going to take to this stuff pretty well. I've sort of mixed this in uh, just a little bit. Didn't do a thorough mixing, but that's okay because I, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, seeing some worms come up and really attack a pocket of food waste like this. So cool. That's it uh, for this week, guys. Uh, we will see you uh, next week. Ah. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I think things are still going pretty well for us. The population isn't what I'd call dense yet. This is dense, but it's coming along. And in a couple weeks, I'm gonna put a seed starting mat underneath this worm farm to get some man-made heat radiating through the bin. It's gonna be a low-grade heat that's applied evenly to the bottom of the bin, which is gonna help keep the worm activity and the microbe activity higher than it otherwise might be. And next week, I'm really looking forward to seeing what these worms do to this new feeding we just gave them. I think we're gonna see them really swarming into it. All right, if you're new to the channel or new to vermicomposting, I wanna send you the Worm Farm Startup Guide. It's a cool little PDF that's gonna help you start up a small worm bin like this one to recycle your food scraps. Just click this little link above my left shoulder. It's gonna take you down to the video description where you'll click another little link where you can sign up to get that guide. You can also check the top link in the video description to get that guide as well. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next week.